<clears throat> Hello and welcome to a Weekend Handyman Lawnmower Cart Build. Basically what I'm working on here is a lawnmower that is only going to end up pulling a cart, which is why I removed the uh, mower deck. I have some parts and pieces here that I'll make a cart out of. Over here is the mower deck, which is still good, but unneeded for this project. So let me bring you up the speed a little bit. Besides removing the mower deck, I've attempted to see how well this lawnmower runs. It was about running, but it basically has no idle. It just races up to full speed. I'm going to show you why. This right here is the shaft that the throttle blade would attach to. It would attach to these flat spot with a couple screws. At some point in this lawnmower's life, that must there however that was attached from the factory came apart. So now this little throttle blade attachment arm thing just has the ability to spin around completely independent of what the throttle link, throttle linkage um, will do. If you're wondering the rest of the carburetor is over here. Um, so basically what I'm doing right now is just grinding off the solder that somebody had put on there at some point and going to hope to get a much better solder bond on there. Apparently whoever soldered this last time was a retard or something because this is just made of brass or copper so it solders should stick that no fucking problem but apparently whoever did it last time was an idiot and probably didn't heat the shaft up enough. enough. So I'm going to attempt to re-solder it to see if I can make it stick or make it hold up to the being attached to a lawnmower that vibrates like a bastard and uh, see if it'll work. Apparently the Dremel here at the shop only has on and off. It makes working on this thing a little bit more annoying, but hey, these are the tools down here at the shop. So here is the new and improved uh, throttle blade shaft. Um, basically, what I did is I just made, I just kind of lightly made, you know, figured out where it needed to be, and then put a little bit of solder on the end, and then I took it all the way off so I can make it really, really hot to get a good solder um, bond on there. Essentially, what happened with the, whoever did this last didn't get this shaft nowhere near hot enough to get the solder to, to stick to it. I heated the fuck out of it. Um, I mean, there's a quick soldering tip if you are soldering anything. You, you want the solder to be melted by the part you're soldering, not the heat of whatever it is. Whether you're using a soldering gun like that, or a torch like this, like I had used. You want the part to melt the solder, not the heat source to melt it. As if the part, if the part you're soldering melts it, then you know you've got a bond into it. So. I'm just going to have to grind the extra solder off of it because there's a, you know, there's probably a little bit too much there to be able to work on the carburetor, but hopefully that lasts a little while, otherwise we got to, you know, find some parts off eBay or find another parts lumber or something to get another one of these shafts out of. This one's all fucked I guess I kind of lucked out. There is enough space for the glob that I have on there for the throttle linkage and shaft to go in there and then, you know, it works like it's supposed to now. Um, it's still a little bit messed up. I still might need to replace it anyways or find something because it still has a lot of movement down there. But hopefully that won't matter. And it's, you know, cause this is just a fucking lawnmower carburetor. It's not precise. But we'll see. Get it back on the lawnmower and see what happens.
now that the tractor is basically all set, or I know it's all set, just a few touching up here and there, like that fender's loose and stuff like that. But the tractor is running, driving, tires are holding air, so I can move on to phase two, which is building a cart to put that on top of. So this is the snowblower that the frame was attached to. What somebody had did was basically make a backyard DR power wagon. <clears throat> that, uh, that box had a frame mounted on the bottom of it, which was then mounted to the front of a snowblower attachment that had, or a snowblower without the snowblower attachment and basically just pushed that box around which had which had a cast wheel in front. <clears throat> it worked okay as long as you didn't put anything heavy in it. But as soon as you put anything heavy in it, that cast wheel would get all fucked up and bent. So that is why I am reworking this box and that frame to work behind this lawnmower. I was going to make a brand new frame for the owner of this cart and tractor, but he decided he would rather, for now, reuse the old frame, touch it up and fix it up so it works better, and then just put wheels on that to tow it behind the lawn tractor. We still might end up going with that at some point if that frame falls apart. This is not that well built, but it'll work. So here's the cart as it was set up before. This box part used to actually be a trailer for probably a tractor, and this was where the wheels were attached. But the previous uh, person who built this thing did just built a cell frame under it and just made some tabs to mount the axle through following the tilts, which is great, but this section of the frame extends way too far. It doesn't allow it to tilt, which is why I'm going to end up remaking the frame. Now it has some money on The tilt was, or the, the latching part back here is pretty well thought out. It tilts, but obviously it hits in the back there, so I'm going to have to build another frame, or build a better frame, one shorter, so I can tilt a lot more and actually have your load dump. But I'm going to essentially keep the same design. I'm going to cut off all this stuff and mount it on whatever frame I end up building. What I've done to this so far is chop off the back cross member. Now, the reason I did that is because this frame was nice and long, but it didn't provide enough pivot or it didn't provide enough room for the box to go on top to pivot to dump all the way. It had a few inches of movement and that was it. So what I'm going to do is cut these ends off of it and use this as a cross member in here to re-strengthen up the back part of this frame and be good to go.
<clears throat> All right, project update. <clears throat> I have my cross member in here now. I'm just working on welding it in here. Um, the welds are coming out okay. I'm using a different welder than I normally would. It's a it's an older, bigger welder than the the home the home one that I usually use. Uh, so I, you know, this what this side over here in particular doesn't look that good. But I was trying to figure out how to set it up right, and I'm having an issue with getting a good ground on it. I'm probably going to have to take the ground connector off and clean it up a little bit. It's getting kind of shitty. When I do get a good round of it, it will weigh down some good welds. <clears throat> so right now I'm taking a break, eating some lunch. I cleaned up this a little bit. Probably not going to do a full seam weld here. I don't really need to. I'm just going to leave it like that probably. But it's coming out pretty good so far for what I'm working with. Here's an example of one of the better welds I was able to get out of it. I make no claims of being professional, I'm just an amateur, but after cleaning up the ground cable, I'm getting I'm able to get much better welds out of it now. Before it kept losing ground connection and it would do a lot of splatter and hop around and stuff. But one challenge you'll have to deal with is filling this gap over here. Let's see how that goes. So now it's time to do the other side. I have flipped this frame over. Unfortunately, because of the previous craftsmanship that was made, it doesn't quite line up here, but that's all right. I'm just going to lay some weld down here, and I'm going to lay some weld down on this side. And I'm probably just going to leave that as is. should be plenty strong enough. That, that back cross member, cross member isn't really going to have to hold too much weight, but it is what it is. So when this frame was originally constructed, this part and when the back and this part were technically separate and whoever built it last went ahead and welded it together well of course you can still see the seam so what I'm going to do to make sure it doesn't crack or anything is I've made pieces like this out of eighth inch thick flat iron just to give it a little extra strength to make sure it doesn't crack on me so that's what I'll be welding on next Alrighty then, so I now have my plates welded on to stiffen the frame up. I have these tabs welded on instead of bolted on like they were before to make them more solid. So we could remount that box on there and still have the tilt. What I'm working on next is re-welding on the uh, locking mechanism for the tilter. The welds that were on there were pretty bad. If you remember, I could knock them off with the hammer. So all I'm going to do now is I've cleaned up the metal like you're supposed to, and I'm going to do some weld beads along the ed edges here on the inside on both sides.
So here it is, or here's the box mounted on the frame that I was just working on. Let's see how she works. Much better than before. Before he would wouldn't even have half that movement. Now you can consider more of a, a real uh, dumping bed, and you can still take the box off to, cur to uh, give yourself uh, a flatbed trailer if you wanted to. So that does it for the first installment of this lawn tractor trailer build. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment below, and check us out on Facebook. Link will be in the description.